Thanks for joining us at Hamline Chapel online today. I'm Pastor Ryan Good. I'm the pastor here at Hamline. It's so great to have you a part of our service online. So hey, thanks for pulling this video up today. Thanks you, thank you for participating uh, in our service online today. I hope that uh, it's a great time of worship for you. And uh, I'm so glad that you're here with us online today. and Merry Christmas. It is so great to be able to meet with you in your home or wherever it is that you find yourself today on Christmas. Uh, the last four weeks we've been traveling together to this day looking forward to the birth of our Savior and our King Jesus and I'm so glad that we can gather together uh, on this morning just online wherever we are to worship together. I hope you uh, enjoy some of the music that's in with this video today, and I hope that your Christmas morning has uh, been a great one. Your Christmas day, whatever time you're watching this, uh, has been a great one for you. Uh, I want to begin our time together today with just a word of prayer, and then uh, I want to read to you the Christmas story and share just a few thoughts on it uh, with you today. So if you would, let's pray together. So God, we are grateful for this day, this Christmas day, uh, where we welcome you into the world. God, the last few weeks have been full of busyness and shopping and concerts and preparation and cooking and baking and all these things. And, and today we've arrived, a Christmas day, this day where we welcome you uh, into the world. God, we're grateful for all the beauty that this day holds and uh, for the power and the humility that are both tied up uh, in this day. God, thank you for not staying distant and far away, but thank you for coming near to us on Christmas. We love you and we worship you today. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I wanted to uh, read to you from uh, the scriptures from 
Luke's Gospel, the Christmas story. And it's a a familiar one to us, uh, but it's a powerful one as well. So uh, listen in to these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. The birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known that what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all they had seen and heard as it had been told them. Amen. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's so many different parts of uh, the Christmas story that stand out to us that are um, the powerful things. And there's so many different people for us to connect with and um, to, uh, to just identify with uh, their role in the story. I spent some time uh, this week in our uh, worship space in our church building staring at the stained glass window of the nativity scene that's there. And I always like to just look around that that window and, and gaze at the different people that are involved in the story. You know, I look at Mary and I think of this young lady who just said, God, whatever you want to do with my life, you can do it. I think of Joseph, who often stands like in the back corners, overlooking everything, and, and what uh, an incredible amount of humility to say, I'll raise this child, and I'll love this child, and I'll care for this child. And though the world might question me and what I'm doing, I'm going to do what God calls me to do. I like the, the shepherd in the image who... Uh, in their day was like the down and out of society. The, the forgotten, the spit upon, the ignored, the people, that, the, the group of people you didn't want anything to do with. And as we just read, like they're the ones that hear the news first, that they're the ones that are out partying in the field with the angels celebrating this incredible good news, Jesus. And then of course there's the animals kind of hidden around and we have baby Jesus. And for me, the, the beauty and the power, I think this season that I've focused on quite a bit is, is the scene of the animals around Jesus. 
and to look at the location where the Son of God chose to, to reveal himself in a manger, in hay, a trough to feed animals. That's where he reveals himself. And you know, we often think of a king in pomp and circumstance. We think of uh, even in some of our windows of the story of Jesus, like he's got a halo on his head and all this. But, but this night, there wasn't a halo going over his head. It was just this baby boy laying in the straw in a manger. Of all places, that's where God decides to show up and to reveal himself. This Christmas day, if there's a dad somewhere in your house, my guess is that they have one of two things handy. One, like me, a nice cup of coffee. And the other thing that any self-respecting dad has on Christmas day is a trash bag, right? We have to make sure that there's no loose wrapping paper lying around this house, right? Dad sits in the corner and is quick to scoop up our wrapping paper to keep the house nice and clean. We like things presentable. This season, if you had company coming, you probably rushed to clean your house, get the dishes away, to make everything spotless and perfect. And, and the beautiful thing about this Christmas story is that God doesn't care about the messes in our life. He's not sitting there with the trash bag saying, come on, put it all in here, let's get everything neat and tidy before I show up. But, but God, at Christmas, reveals himself in baby Jesus in the straw, in the animal's food. And if God shows up there, then there's no place that's off limits. There's no place where God will not show up. We could expect him anywhere. This Christmas, when you're taking the trash out to your trash bin, and it's freezing cold and you're bundled up and you're walking to put it in the trash bin, what if you walked out alert thinking like, God could be appearing in all places. God is everywhere and God's with us always, but the Christmas story is the powerful reminder that he meets us there. And maybe when you take the trash out this season, you remind yourself, you remind yourself that even in the grossest of places, even in the nasty places in life, that God is at work and we can expect to find God in those places. There's no place that's off limits once God shows up in the straw. So this Christmas season, may you be reminded and encouraged and filled with hope and filled with joy and knowing that God's willing and ready and is meeting you wherever it is that you are in life. You don't have to have your trash bag and everything cleaned up and perfect and, and taken out, but that, that God will meet you right where you are today. In your brokenness, he's there. In your loneliness, he's there. In the midst of your suffering, God is there. In your grief, God meets you there. If you've been away from the church and away from a life of faith for a long time, God is ready to meet you there. There's no place that's off limits. So this Christmas season, I hope that it's a time for you to draw close to God and to recognize that, that God has entered into his creation and has revealed himself to us in the baby Jesus. And I hope and I pray that, that this season, as you recognize that God entered into the messiness of your life, that he would also empower you to, empty, or to, to enter into the messiness in the lives of others around you as well. The season inspires us to look for ways to help and to serve and to care. May you go out of your way as you reflect on this king who comes into the straw and may you enter into those broken and lonely and hurting places in the world as well to help others along the way. Jesus meets us in our messy places and unexpected places. Can we meet others in those places as well? Friends, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. 
however it is that you're celebrating today. I hope that you embrace the messy house with the papers and the, the dirty dishes and, and the trash that needs to be taken out. And, and I hope that the mess and the chaos and all the wildness of this day remind you of the good news that our mess is the place where God wants to meet us. The unexpected places are where we can expect to encounter our Savior. Friends, as we remember the birthday of Jesus, may we give all glory and honor to him. And God, we thank you for filling our hearts with joy. We thank you for your presence and your perfect peace during this season. And God, would you use all of us to show your love to those around us. And thank you for meeting us where we are. Amen. Friends, may you uh, find Jesus in the messy places in your life. May you allow him to lead you into the messy places in other people's lives. And may you serve and follow him with hope and with joy and with thanksgiving. As you are reminded today that once God shows up in the straw, there's no place that's off limits to him. May God bless you this week as you serve and follow him. Merry Christmas.